In this video, we'll take a quick look at some of the major features of the RAD Editor, including how to install it, how to use a spell check feature, how to customize the toolbar, how to create and use snippets, and how to set the context menus. We'll begin this exercise by creating a new website. And the website is going to be an AJAX enabled website written in C sharp. And the name of the website is going to be the totally imaginative website. But we use this AJAX enabled website because it automatically places a script manager onto the design surface for us. Now we're going to replace this script manager almost immediately with the RAD script manager, but at least it reminds us that that's something we need to do. So the first thing we'll do is we'll copy a RAD editor onto the design surface. And you see that when the smart tag opens up, one of the things it offers to do for us is to replace the script manager with a RAD script manager. So we'll do that. And I do that here mostly to get you into the habit of using a RAD script manager. And the reason you want to do that is because it will consolidate all of the smaller scripts that your RAD AJAX enabled components might use into one large script so that it'll make a single web request instead of multiple web requests. Every time you place a RAD script manager onto your form, you're going to want to open up the smart tag and add the Telerik webresources.axd file into your web config file. And what that's going to do for you is enable the script manager to handle the postbacks. After we've done that, we can go back over to our RAD editor, open the smart tag, and tell it we're going to enable the spell check for RAD editor. So it enables that in the web config file, but that's not the only thing that you have to do. The next thing that you need to do is here inside your app data folder, you want to make a new folder called RAD spell. And into this RAD spell folder, we need to place a dictionary. So you can see this is the folder where I've installed my RAD controls for ASP.NET AJAX. And inside that folder, there's an app data folder which contains a RAD spell folder. Inside the RAD spell folder, we have German, English, and French dictionaries. So I'm just going to take this English dictionary here, and I'm going to go down to the folder that I am working in, which is the overview app data. And there's the RAD spell folder that I just created. And I'm going to copy this down into the RAD spell folder. And once that's done, if I refresh my project, I see I've got an English dictionary. But that is all we need to do to get the project to run. So let's look at the application at this point. And you'll see that the red editor comes up nicely. And if we type something in that has a misspelled word inside it, and then click on our spelling check icon, you can see that it tells us the word misspelled is, in fact, misspelled. So like any good spell checker, if we click on the word, it'll replace it for us until spell checking is completed. And that's how easy it is to implement spell checking in three different languages. The next thing you'll notice here is there's an awful lot of tools up here. Now, if you're space constrained on your website or on your web page, you may not want to have all these icons show up. Or you may just not have a need for them in a customized editing situation. So the next thing we're going to look at is how to implement the toolbar. Now, Telerik RAD Editor provides five different ways that you can implement the tools inside the toolbar. This is the first way. This is the default toolbar, the one that you'll get if you don't otherwise specify tools in some fashion. The second way that you can do this is you select the RAD Editor, go over to the Properties Editor, and there is a Tools Collection Editor down here. So we'll add a Tools group and this is the, the tool group groups the tools together. And it, in turn, contains a tools collection. Inside the tools collection, if we add a tool, you can select them by names. So let's use some of the common editing tools that you might want. Let's say copy and cut and paste. You see there's a lot of different tools in there for you to pick from. 
And once we've done that and close up the wizards, you see that immediately, as with the good Telerik controls, they show you on the design surface the way that you've configured your toolbar. So here you've got your copy, your cut, and your paste. And if you run the application, you'll get your tools displaying. And if we say the quick red fox, and then just copy quick and red, and then go out here to the end and paste, 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 quick and red, you see the tools behave just the way you'd expect them to. So that's the second way, is by adding things in declaratively through the Properties Manager. The next way that you can add a tool is programmatically. So we're going to go down here to the page load event and understand that this is not the best programming practice. I'm just going to add a tool onto the toolbar. Normally you'd want to check to see if you have postbacks going on and you'd want to check the tool groups to see that you have tools present so you're not going to get a, a null reference error. But you see, I'm just going to assume because I know over on the design side I added tools group, I'm going to call it tools group zero and add a new tool. And so I use this Telerik Web UI editor tool declaration, this class declaration, and I tell it that I'm going to add the bolding tool here. And so we just add the new tool into the tools collection. And if we run the application now, you'll notice that we have these tools that we added declaratively inside the design surface and also this bolding tool that we added programmatically. So again if we type the quick red fox and go select a couple of the words and click on the B, we get bolding on our text. So that's the third way is to add it programmatically. The fourth way that we can add it is by the use of an XML file. And so we're going to get rid of that addition there in the program and we can also go over here to the tools collection and remove this tool group that we already added and now we have the default tool set again and so what we're going to do is add a file I'm going to add an XML file here in our app data so we're going to add a new item It'll be an XML file. We're going to call this our tool file, tools file. Now, Telerik provides a nice example in their help manual of what one of these tools files has to look like. And what it doesn't need is that XML declaration at the top. It's not going to hurt anything if you leave it in. But I'm going to insert here a tools file. You see we define root and tools and then each of the tools individually. And this is a tools file that one of the fellows that I work with uses to serve as the toolbar for a commercial product that our company makes. And so now that we've got that in, we can go back over to our form and select the red editor, look at the properties, and what you need to set is down here there is a tools file so we'll say app data slash tools file dot xml and then once we've told it about the tools file we can run the project again and you can see we get this tools file that's kind of halfway in between the full default set that gives us three or four rows of tools and the really abbreviated set that I showed in the previous example where we added things declaratively and programmatically. So that is the fourth method of adding tools to your RAD editor is by using an XML file to define the tools that you want to see. The final way that you can do this is by adding an ASP.NET folder and it's a little off the edge of the screen so you can't see it but it's going to be a theme folder. We'll just leave it at theme one here. And then we're going to add a new item to the theme folder. It's going to be a skin file. And that's rad editor.skin. And once we've got that file, we can get rid of the boilerplate. And the way the skin file works is you do you bring in the Telerik Web UI namespace by using this register declaration up here and then you add 
the shell of a Telerik RAD editor with the run at server here. Give the skin an ID, and in this case it's going to be setting properties. And then you add the elements that you want to apply to the RAD editors that this particular skin requests to be set by this skin ID right here. So there's a couple more things we have to do in order to implement this, but again you can see we have some, some basic editing tools here. And the other things that you need to do are to go over to the markup inside your HTML page and you want to tell it that we're going to use a theme and the theme is going to be theme 1, so IntelliSense helps us out here. And the other thing that we want to do Normally we have this default skin is being used, but instead what we're going to use is a skin ID, and that's going to be this setting property skin. So we select the setting properties, and it puts that in there. And then we've still got this tools file declaration in here, so we're going to get rid of that just to avoid any confusion. As it turns out, the theme is going to override the tools file declaration, but just to avoid ambiguity, I'm going to get rid of it. You can try that for yourself if you'd like to see how that works. And if we run the application, you see we get this different but abbreviated tool set that is displayed for us here. And one other powerful feature of the RAD editor is the ability to use snippets. And for the snippets, those are declared inside of the RAD editor structure. So if we go back to the RAD editor, look at the properties, and go down to the snippets collection, you see there's nothing in here. So we can give the first snippet a name, and we'll call this one Inquiry. And into this, I'm going to paste just a little blurb that I wrote up. And then let's add a second one, and we'll call this one Purchase and purchase is going to contain some different verbiage and then for good measure we'll just do one more which we're going to call warranty and warranty is going to contain yet a different set of verbiage and with that we've got plenty of snippets to demonstrate the snippet capability and in order to access these snippets we'll go back over to our rad editor skin and we will add here to our tools We'll add one more tool, and the name of the snippet tool is Insert Snippet. So if we run the application, you'll see that our theme now adds this snippet icon for us. And if we click on that, it'll say, well, you've got three snippets you can pick from, Inquiry, Purchase, and Warranty. So it'll automatically type that in for us. Pretty powerful for a, a browser-based editor, wouldn't you say? So the final thing that we want to discuss is context menus. So there's a couple different ways to implement the context menus. And one way is to do it through the property editor. So once you've selected the RAD editor, you can go up here to the context menus collection and you can create your context menus here. Those this will generate some HTML markup for you that'll define the context menus for the RAD editor. I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut and I'm going to go here to the definition of the RAD editor and I'm just going to paste in some, con some code that establishes some context menus for the RAD editor. And what this code is doing here is it's going to take out this, it's going to disable the primary context menu it says anytime I've got an image I'm going to offer cut copy and paste as tools in a context menu pop-up and here I'm going to add justify left center right and full and you see that this context menu is going to be applied anytime we've got a p tag or a paragraph tag in our HTML and so I'm going to run the application and I intentionally left our snippets back in so we'd have something that we could type in that we could act on. So you see we get our snippet typed out here and now if I click right click on this you see this is the normal context menu that will pop up is cut copy paste paste from word. You say yeah but that's a paragraph how come it didn't 
pop up the context menu that we just defined? And the answer is we don't really have this inside P tags. So down here, if you click on this icon, you can look at the HTML markup. And you see that, in fact, we don't have paragraph tags. But we can put a paragraph tag here, and we can close the tag here. And then once we do that, go back over to the edit mode, you don't see the paragraph tags, but they're there. And you know they're there because when you right click on this area that's inside a paragraph, you see that we now get our context menu that allows us to align center, align right, and uh, justify it, and so forth. So those are customized context menus that you can implement pretty handily inside the RAD editor. For more Telerik videos, technical discussion forums, and examples, please go to www.telerik.com.